turn to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Here ends the Old Testament reading. The psalm for today is Psalm 60. Consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Here ends the epistle reading. Alleluia. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Alleluia. <laughs>
Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel is recorded in Matthew 13. It will also be today's sermon text. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. When the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. This is the gospel of the Lord. television 
It described the way that seeds were planted, broadcasting, growing the seeds, scattering the seed by hand across the field. For countless generations, this was the way farmers planted their crops. The people who gathered along the seashore to hear Jesus were familiar with broadcasting. They had seen it done, they had done it themselves. Some seed falls on the path, the hard track the farmer has walked on time and time again. You don't expect anything to grow there. Some seed falls among the rocks. The rocks seem to be almost everywhere. Some seed falls among the weeds and thorns which always seem to have a head start before the good seed has a chance to grow. This last summer, fiber optic cable was installed down our road. It was interesting to see how many rocks are below the surface, how many rocks are still there. It was interesting to see that the grass did not replenish itself, but instead the weeds. And of course, our beautiful South Dakota state flower, a wall of sunflowers the whole width of our property. Some seed, though, falls on good, rich soil and grows up tall and straight and yields an abundant harvest. The broadcaster knows that this happens. Maybe not how or why, it's a mystery. We don't have the chance always to watch a time-lapse photography of a seed germinating and growing. It still is a mystery to us. But the sower praises God and thanks God because they're now going to have something to eat. Today's story about broadcasting seed has details that are very familiar to the crowd who came to the lakeside to hear Jesus. The story seems to ask two questions. What kind of soil are you? And the second question, what kind of sower are you? What kind of soil are you? The truth is that from moment to moment, you and I can be all four types soil that Jesus describes. The sower is ever going out to sow, broadcasting the seed, and whenever someone's spirit is touched, the seed has found a place to grow. What kind of soil are you? Sometimes my mind is utterly conventional, restricted by my training and hard crust of custom and tradition remains unbroken. I avoid the pain of new ideas, new commitments. I forget nothing old. I learn nothing new. You're blighted by Alton. We remain with the old stuff. And that's not always something that is good or to be proud of. My fixed thinking can obstruct God's goodwill. I can be a path hardened by time where the seed falls in vain to be picked up by robber birds and carried off. We are all that way, aren't we, sometimes? Not willing to take a new look at things. What kind of soil are you? Sometimes my mind is soft, shallow, Emotional. There's emotion, get excited about it, but then there's no action to follow through. My mind may be eager, but not stable, so nothing grows there. The shallow soil of sentimentality and the hard rocks of cynicism conspire to prevent roots from reaching down. Brilliant sunlight of reality makes me wither because there is no depth, no place to grow. Are 
Are you that way? All the emotion, get excited, but no follow through? What kind of soil are you? Sometimes our minds are preoccupied, absorbed by the things of this world, cluttered by other concerns, unable to reflect or pray. The hectic day, the dance of activity, the endless tumult of what's next? That's the way it seems like the grandchildren are there. All excitement, no time to really get down to brass tacks. The growth that there should be is choked and strangled by hundreds of weeds. The conventional mind, the sentimental mind, the preoccupied mind, mercifully there are times I am a rich, fertile, welcoming soil. And God grant that I would produce then, that you and I together would produce 30-fold, 60-fold, maybe even 100-fold. That seed comes to me always through the mercy and the action of God. I'm simply the soil. You are simply the soil in which the word of God is planted. It's the good seed of God's word. God's grace in Jesus Christ is imprudent. Yes, imprudent. God's grace in Christ is imprudent, uncalculating, concerned with something more than immediate outcome. Always and everywhere the sower goes out to sow, casting the seed in every direction. As we listen to Jesus' stories, he wants us to start thinking. Today's story asks, what kind of soil are you? And then the second question, what kind of sower are you? Our words and actions done in the name of Jesus are scattered seed. We walk the fields of life, broadcasting the seed of the gospel, sharing the good news, and doing things great and small in Jesus' name. And it doesn't matter that they aren't fabulous things, but that we are living our lives to reflect our love and gratefulness to the Lord Jesus. What is most important is not the wonderfulness of what we're doing, but that it truly reflects our love for God's grace in our lives. We can do something so simple in that we are broadcasting this service on Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, and most people are on Facebook. And we can simply take that church service and hit, hit share. And it gives us a long list of our acquaintances. We could scatter the seed to all of those people send it to everyone on our list and wonder if would they be blocking us. You may choose to send a church service only occasionally, share it with someone because it meant something to, to you especially, and then you can put a little message in there. I thought this might be helpful to you. I found it helpful to me and Maybe give one or two reasons why you found it helpful and are sharing it. There may be a strategy involved, but it's a way of broadcasting the seed of God's word. And you don't know what the reaction will be. You don't know if they've blocked you for 30 days. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, was traveling on horseback late at night in a desolate place. A robber stopped him. The robber made him empty his pockets. And being a preacher, he only had a few coins in his pocket. John Wesley said, uh, you check my saddlebags. The man did. And they were just full of books. The man was frustrated and was about to turn away. 
John Wesley said, stop. I have something more to give you. My friend, you may live to regret this sort of life. If you do, I beseech you to remember this. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Years later, John Wesley was preaching, and after the sermon, a man asked to talk with him. He identified himself as that man who had tried to rob John Wesley on that dark, desolate road. He said that Wesley's words had haunted him. He had become a Christian, a good citizen, and a prosperous tradesman. To you, dear sir, I owe it all. That story shows what some would call the wastefulness, the imprudence of sowing the gospel. Just think, if you or I were on that lonely road riding our horse, or our car broke down and we were walking along in the dark and someone tried to rob us, would we try to share the gospel? Would we broadcast the seed to them? Wouldn't we just imagine that they were the hard path in which the seed would not take root? We would not expect them to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. We would not expect to gain 30, 60, or even 100 fold. John Wesley sowed the seed anyway. And that gracious act on Wesley's part transformed the life of that man and that of his wife and of his children and of anyone else who that man may have robbed. We really don't know. Only God knows the return on sowing that seed. And all because John Wesley did not hesitate to toss gospel seed on what appeared to be hopeless, hard-packed ground. And the question remains, what kind of soil are you? What kind of soil am I? What kind of sowers are we? Amen. The peace of God which goes beyond all understanding and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let us rise and confess our faith using the words of the apostles. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father of Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for prayer. Lord God, almighty creator, you spoke and the universe came into being. By the exertion of your will, the earth was populated with herds and flocks. By your word, vegetation and grain sprang forth to nourish all living things. We are grateful that your power still exists among us. As the rain and snow come down from heaven at your command and nourish the earth, so you have promised that your mighty word, sown as seed in the hearts of men, women, and children everywhere, will produce results. Send your Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts to receive your word. Prevent us from hardening our hearts so that your word cannot penetrate. Keep us from short-lived emotional reaction to your word. Protect us from the thorns of coveting, which are able to choke out our faith. Make our hearts a fertile field 
so that your word may produce the fruits of faith a hundredfold. As we sow the seed of your word on the hearts of many, may your Holy Spirit bless it that it may spring forth into a living, lively hope. When, O oh Lord, we see little or no results of the word we have spread, encourage us to remain faithful sowers with your promise that your word shall not return empty. Bless the administration of our government that it may help provide a healthy climate for the seed to sow, to germinate, and bring forth fruit. This we ask in the name of the Lord of the harvest, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name then we join to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our third hymn as posted, number 343. 343. Thank you. strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. Bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is alive and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. St. Charles, Illinois, and my daughter Grace Russell, also from Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. And you're going to Martin Luther College? Yes, I'll be a senior this year. Very good. Um, There's coffee, decaf, ice cream bars in the kitchen, refrigerator, freezer. I think there might also be pop and curtain. Yeah, you, you mentioned the voters meeting. I, actually, I'm going to uh, postpone it for a while until I have somebody committed to be, be the new, to be the new treasurer. Otherwise, it, it doesn't do any good until we have a name okay. uh, to bring forward. So I'm meeting with someone this week. Hopefully, he accepts, and um, we can move forward with that. But until I've got somebody lined up 